Sharon Jordan has come home, home to Hammond Care. Sharon began working at the Meadows at Hammondville in the mid-1990s. They were early days for the Meadows, an incredibly significant time in two ways. First, this was when Hammond Care began to shape a whole new approach to dementia care, what's become our model of care. Second, it was a transformative time for Sharon in her career path, her life and her family's life. Sharon, thanks so much for joining us on the Profile Series. Thank you. Can I take you back to your childhood first and get you to paint us a picture of your childhood and especially the place that education played in that? Education didn't play a very re big role in my childhood. I was fostered out when I was 10 years old. Um, <clears throat> and then at 14 and nine months, in them days, you're allowed to leave school. So I left school at 14 and nine months and decided that I wanted to get a job and look after myself independently. Where was that first job, Sharon? That was at Laddam's Laundry in Glebe, folding up sheets. Fast forward to the age of 36. You're a single mum. Yep. And you find Hammond Care. I do. How find did that Hammond happen? Care. Um, I went back and did my year 10 certificate because I wanted to make a better life for myself and my children. So I actually went for a job. I thought I wanted to be a secretary. Um, I went for a job and they didn't want to know me. Why not? I don't know. I thought I was very, I would make a very good secretary. <laughs> Maybe because I wasn't really academically savvy. The leaving certificate was really important for you, wasn't it? It was. I, look, I needed to do that if I wanted to find uh, a career. Yeah. Okay. Which you found at Hammond Care? I did find at Hammond Care. There was an ad in the paper um, for a carer looking after the elderly um, and I thought well I can do that I'm sure I can and I was offered the job come in had an interview they must have seen something in me that I didn't see and I was offered the job at the new facility called the Meadows that they were opening you were one of the first staff members there I was yes yeah. yes paint us a picture of what that was like in that snapshot of time? That was um, something that never had been done before in that time. Um, we were bringing people with dementia, which I didn't even know what dementia was in them days. Um, Hammond taught me what dementia was. Um, and it was bringing people with dementia into a home-like environment, taking them out of the like the nursing home kind of thing um, and this had never been done before and it was all new and exciting. There were ways in which you were making it up as you went along actually. We did, we yeah. did. We interacted with the residents, we had them interacting with us like cooking, um, gardening, just normal home-like activities. Um, hosing the garden, sweeping the floors. If they didn't want to do that, they could sit down and watch the old movies. What was it, The Seven Brothers and Seven Wives? I don't know how many times i watched that movie over the years. <laughs> It'll always stick in my mind. Or if they wanted to sit in the garden, they could, or whatever they wanted to do. Yeah, these were the foundational days of what is now the Hammond Care model of care. Can you describe for us how that developed? From those days? The Meadows was, plan was that you could see residents at all the times. If they were walking around the kitchen or out in the um, gardens or that, they could come back in. If they were um, having behaviour problems, we could divert their attention to something else, like maybe making a cup of tea or maybe going and doing the garden. So the residents and their needs were actually shaping the model of care. That's right. Yeah. What they needed and what they could achieve being in that home-like environment. It gave them, a, I think, a sense of worth. It made the residents unique in their own ways. They all had their different personalities. 
they all had their different care needs and we were able to do that with just going with the flow. I want you to tell us about, I think, what was the first outing that you ever had with the Resonance, which is now such a given. Well, that's right. But at, this was the first one. At that time, um, we were taking the whole Meadows, which would be 30, I think, plus residents, out on their Thursday outing. I'm sure everyone was a bit nervous about it because it had never been done before. <laughs> and we were getting all the residents on the bus. I remember walking into the staff room at the Meadows. Stephen was there that day. And um, I said, oh, this is going to be good. And he went, how do you know it's going to be good? What if you lose one? <laughs> well, I thought, oh my God, to myself, you know? I went, oh, that's not going to happen. Anyway, they all waved us off, for the managers and Stephen. And I remember him coming back. We went to Camden and we stopped there to make the residents a cup of tea, take them to the toilet, watching, watching, because we didn't want to lose anyone. <laughs> um, and I think we, I can't remember where we went after that. It was a long time ago. But we came back to the Meadows and Stephen was there. And he went, how did it go? I went, perfect. We didn't lose anyone. <laughs> and it always stuck in my mind. I yeah. And I mean, that would have been a big thing. No one, you think, taking out 30 odd dementia patients. But we did it. We sang on the bus. We played games. We had cups of tea. We had sandwiches. It was lovely. Fantastic. And in time, Hammond Care allowed you, enabled you to continue your education, further your education? They did. They did. Hammondville um, taught me everything I knew about dementia. Yeah. Then they gave me the opportunity to further my education and I always wanted to be a nurse. Okay, so they gave me that opportunity. Um, they set up a program for staff who wanted to to go to uni and become an RN. What did that mean for you? That was the biggest opportunity that I could ever have in my life. Um, I owe Hammondville so much for my career, the lifestyle that I was able to give my children um, while they were growing up, be able to Pay for their weddings. Yeah. Okay. And look after my family. And after you finished that program, 10 years later, after you first arrived here, you had a big decision to make. Yeah, it was heart wrenching because Stephen, Angela, and Malcolm offered me a job here in a management position when I finished my um, diploma in nursing. They also offered to pay off my hex. And I was offered a, a new grad position at Bankstown Hospital. So it was just heart wrenching because I felt really guilty that I'm leaving my family, I'm letting them down. But I felt that I needed to go on and further my clinical skills, which I wouldn't have been able to do here at Hammondville. Which you did at Bankstown yes, for I another did. 10 years. Yes. And then you called Angela. I did call Angela. I was a bit disillusioned with the hospital system, the hospital. Um, and I messaged Ange, actually, and. This is early 2015. Oh, the end of February, beginning of March. And I messaged her and said, hi, Ange, it's me. Um, would you have me back if I wanted to come home? And she said, I'd have you back in a heartbeat. Well, that was just wonderful to me because I didn't want to retire. I'm too young, I think. I'm 57, but don't tell anyone no, that. No, no, just okay? secret between the two yeah, of us. Yeah, just between us. Yeah. And I wasn't ready to retire, where was I going to go? I wanted to go home. 
It's a very interesting thing that you categorise it like that. This is home for you. It is home for me. It really is. And when I came back after two weeks, or even the, the first week that I'd walked through Hammondville, because I'd left before it had grown so big, this, what it is now was Stephen Stream and Angers and others. And I'm so proud of them because their dreams have come true and it's even grown even further. You and Angela have got a special thing going, haven't you? We have. I love Ange dearly. Yeah. Yeah. Always have a special place in my heart. How would you describe her? Okay. <laughs> Ange makes out that she's tough and scary. <laughs> but I know deep down that she's soft and she has a heart of gold. I've seen that over the last number of years, number of years. We've been through good times, bad times, and we've done it all together. Yeah, yeah I love her dearly. She's a very lovely lady. What's your family think of you being back here? They really like it. They've seen the change in me. They've seen how unhappy I was in the hospital system, disillusioned with it. Now they see how happy I am, how I want to go back to work. I get up feeling happy. I'm not dragging myself to work. Sharon, what do you think it is that sets Hammond Care apart for both staff, but also residents? Okay, I think Hammond Care enables staff and residents to fulfil their wants and needs um, in, with dignity, giving us both, resident staff, a feeling of self-worth, being the individuals that we are, which are unique. It's a great way of putting it. Final question always in the profile series is, what floats your boat outside of work? Two things float my boat outside of work. Being able to grow up my grandchildren with my children and going to Hawaii every year to get away from them all for 10 days. <laughs> Sharon, Amazing. it's been great to talk. Like Angela, actually, you didn't want to do this, did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> I'm so glad you've been up to it. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you for having me. And I'd like to say thank you for having care for my career, my life and my future. Thank you.